Hey everybody, how's it going? And welcome back to the channel. Now in this video, we are gonna talk about how I make the mist that you see behind this dead knight. And I'm also gonna show you how I, act I actually animated here in Sequencer. It's actually pretty uh, easy and it's very similar to the other mist that I've been using. This is what I used for those scenes in the short film that you saw this week. But before we get into that, I have to thank my Patreon for this. Also, thank you, Carl. He's one of my Patreons. He has been helping me out with some assets that I've been using here. This is one of the Polyphoria assets that I want to talk about in another video that's coming. And as usual, a shout out to my level two patrons that is right here on screen. Uh, thank you for donating to the channel. You get a shout out if you're on level two. If you are on level one, you will get some Discord perks and more access to me on the Discord server in case you need any help. I was thinking of another tutorial for this week, but I posted an image on Twitter and it blew up. I know if you're a bigger channel watching this, that probably is not much to you, but for a channel my size, that is a lot. So I decided to post a tutorial this week with a little bit of a short film intro. And uh, let's get started. Uh, here is this one of the scenes from the video or the short that you just saw in the beginning. And I'm gonna teach you how to do these. And uh, in the end, I'll show you how to how I incorporated this in Sequencer in case you are interested. Now I got this idea from Vincent Woodjin. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name, mate. But watching one of his videos gave me a cool idea for this. And uh, if you want, you can visit his channel. He has some really cool things of uh, effects in Unreal Engine 5. If you've been to my channel before, you know that from my series of Unreal Engine 5 for beginners, I usually use this Fox sheet that, and, and that's FOG YouTube, by the way, don't demonetize me. This is what I used on my previous tutorial. And it was nice. It gives you some nice fog depending on how far or how close you are. It's already pre-configured and it's there. You don't have to do absolutely anything. You can move it around. It's just a fractal noise that allows you to create this kind of fog. However, it doesn't look as volumetric as this one. And as you can see, this is uh, pretty much the same thing. It's just uh, made in a different way. and. In the engine, it's probably simpler to have this one than this one. Now, I know some people that I've already showed this to have said, well, why don't you use volumetrics? Why don't you use Niagara? The reason why I don't use Niagara is because Niagara tends to produce not so good results right now when using it with sequencer and motion blur. I still need to see if there's anything new helping out with that. I think it is, but I'll, I'll look at that later. For this short film, I needed something that I could use without any hassle, without any problems. So this did the trick. This is actually kind of like an upgraded version of those Fox sheets that I just showed you, because again, it's something very simple that you can just add in Sequencer and it just works without having to tweak anything else. So let's get right into how to build this. Uh, before we build this, let me actually show you how this environment looks without that. Actually it looks pretty cool. Uh, something that I've been building uh, for a couple of days. It doesn't have anything fancy, it doesn't even have RVT, it's just a lot of nanite and a lot of meshes in there. This is a guy that I did some mocap with, pretty cool. Uh, Polyphoria assets, I'm going to talk about those assets in another video, but I highly recommend the Polyphoria assets if you've seen them. So this is pretty much the material that we have. And I've done a couple of things. I made it parameters so we can play with them later on. But as always, I think it's easier to make things from scratch just to show you how they're done. So we're gonna get a new material. I'm going to call it mist sheet. There you go. And the first thing is we need to make this translucent. Now, translucency used to not work really well in the early access, but right now it's working fine. So we can turn this into a translucent surface. Now, the next things we're gonna need is a radial gradient exponential. I'm gonna hook that up into base color and opacity. 
So as you can see, this kind of creates a sphere that's um, it's the, the radial gradient. It means that it creates kind of like a gradient that's fading out from the center to the outside. So that's why if I go around, you can see that this side of the sphere is actually translucent and this side is opaque. So that's what this node does. I mean, pretty simple. Now we're not going to leave it like this. We're actually going to hook it up to a couple more nodes. I'm going to hold the letter M for the multiply. By the way, if you're a complete beginner and this is something new to you, I encourage you to look at my playlist, which I'm going to leave down in the description. So you can go in and see how to build materials and everything else in Unreal Engine 5. That was done with Unreal Engine 5 Early Access, but everything that is in there works for Unreal Engine Release Candidate as well. So uh, if you don't know what I'm doing here, I'm going to go a little bit faster so this video is not an hour long. So check that out if, you, if you're having trouble with this. Now I just got a multiply node. And then the other thing we need is a depth fade node. The reason why we're going to use a depth fade node is because um, it creates that distance look and it creates that volumetric effect if that makes any sense. So I'm just going to get a depth fade node. Just right click and get one of these and we're going to hook it up to letter B. We're going to hook this up to letter A and this is what's going to go into opacity. Now the depth fade, we want it to act into opacity, not so much on the base color because again, it doesn't need any transformation from the base color. The depth has to do with whether we see the fog or not or the mist or whatever you want to call it. Now for this, we need two parameters that we can handle in the material instance. And again, if you're a complete beginner, material instance is that material that allows us to modify parameters without actually having to go inside this editor. But for that, I'm just going to um, hold the letter S and click. It'll give me a scalar parameter so I don't have to convert anything. So we're just going to do D OPA for opacity. And we're going to do another one. So just letter S. F distance like that. Just gonna plug it in here. And these are going to be our two parameters. You can default this to one. We're gonna play with those later. And technically this will be it. Your mist is ready for use. However, what I did is I modified it in order to use a fractal noise or uh, noise texture that you can find here in the engine content, added a panner to it so it moves and added a speed parameter so you can control how fast or how slow it goes. And as you can see, this actually looks different than the other ones just because it doesn't have that fractal noise. So I'm going to create a material instances, which you should always do because it's uh, much easier that way. And after that, all you have to do is use a plane. In this case, I like to use a plane. Rotate it 90 degrees and let's make just a giant plane. There you go, 500. Now this plane, we can apply the material to it and you can still not see anything. But if you see the rim of the plane, uh, you can actually see what's going on. Now, this does look uh, as thick as the basic material. It's actually not doing any volumetrics whatsoever. What we need to do is tweak the values that we set up first. So over here, we have opacity and distance. The opacity we are going to move later, but now let's do distance first. So let's do 6,500, which is what I had before. So there you go. Just by tweaking the distance, I already get some volumetrics in it. And we can tweak the opacity as well. So if we want thicker fog, we can make this um, value a lot higher, like a four. So that's like a thicker kind of mist where everything is engulfed in it. Or we could just make it a little bit lighter by doing less than one. And as you can see, it's instance as that. And you can move your camera around and it's still there. So if you leave it at this point and you like how it looks right now, it's fine. But I like my mist to be moving a little bit while I'm doing the animation and sequencer. The way we're going to do that is we're going to add motion with a panner and we're going to add some fractal noise to get things a little bit more interesting. 
So I'm gonna go back into my material and all I need to do is go here into engine. You should have this folder. Again, if you don't have that folder, I have other tutorials on how to uh, make that show in Unreal Engine 5. Make sure you check out that playlist. But in that folder, all you have to look for is noise. And if we look for noise, I'm usually tiling noise number five. There's other kind of noises over here, like this one it looks like a crater. Uh, this one that's very tiled. There's this one and this one. You use whichever noise you like. I'm just going to stick to tiling noise number five. Now, all you have to do is drag it and it transform into a texture sample. The way that we're going to be using this is with opacity. We're not going to be using this into base color because what I want the noise to get is give me some variations in terms of opacity. Now, how we're gonna achieve this is by adding another multiply node in the chain. So I'm going to hold letter M and click to get a multiply node. We're going to hook this one into A, this one into B and we can hook this up into opacity like that. Okay, and as you can see, we get some noisy uh, kind of mist. So I'm gonna apply. And once it compiles, as you can see, we have some nice mist over here and we can actually go back to where this is, look for my material, double click the instance and make it a little bit thicker. In this case, I'm going to type five. And we have some nice fog with some variations around it. So the panner, what I'm going to add is what's going to make that motion. And this is going to be very good for sequencer because again, this is a very simple setup. Imagine if you were compositing in After Effects or uh, Premiere or whichever other program you use like DaVinci, and you were just using some uh, fog asset in front of that. Well, this is pretty much what you're doing here. You're just doing it in the engine so you don't have to do it in post. Now, this is all well and good and you can stop here as well if you like it, but I'm going to take this a little bit further and I'm going to add a pattern note so this helps a little bit of motion. So double click my material and I need to hook up a pattern note somewhere here. Now, the way we're going to do that is by adding it to the UVs because that's all we need. We need the panner to move the UVs around and it will move our uh, fractal noise, which will in turn move our mist. So I'm going to right click and look for a panner. There you go. And you can see that panner has coordinate, time and speed. We just uh, need to hook up speed because the coordinates we're going to decide by just rotating the plane. So I'm going to hook this up over here. I'm going to give it some speed. Let's make a scalar parameter and call it speed. And we're gonna hook this up here onto speed. Right now, speed is zero, so it's not moving. But if we were to change speed to, let's say something like five, you can see this is going insane. That's too much. I'm just gonna type one. And you can see that's still very fast. So use very small numbers. Actually, the number that I have for this is 0.001, so 0.001. It's actually moving glacially slow. Probably want to do like this. Moves a little bit further. Uh, let's let's just stick with this one. Okay, this one is moving, but it's moving pretty slow. So I'm going to hit apply. As you can see, we have some motion right there. It's probably not coming. Uh, from the direction you want it to because it's coming from above. So I'm just going to rotate my plane this way. There you go. So now it's moving side to side and you have a nice plane to use as a fog background. However, there is an issue with this. I'm not going to lie. It's not 100% bulletproof because again, this is just literally smoke and mirrors like anything that we do for uh, movies, three animation and all that. The way that I use this in sequencer is by actually moving it. So if I were to like go all the way here and I go through it, you're gonna see that the effect goes away. But you want the effect to kind of like fade in as if this fog is getting, as you're going through the mist. So the way that I did that in sequencer is actually by moving these two. So if I were to place a camera, let's, just place a camera over here real quick. 
Let's place a camera here. Let's do 24 focal length so we can see a lot. I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. I'm going to push it back. Okay, so we have nice view of everything, even from our dead knight that's over here behind. And all we have to do is move both things at the same time. So I'm going to create a sequence I'll call it test. I'm going to add that camera in there. And let me just not pilot the camera for now. Also need to add this plane into here. And what we need to do is actually move these at the same time. So this plane already comes with a transformation node, which is good. I'm actually going to go all the way to zero and hit uh, local transformation. And we're going to go to our camera transformations and we're going to transform location too because I'm not going to do any rotation here. So I'm going to go all the way to the end and I'm going to move both of them. So I'm just going to select both of them. And let's do world alignment, not local. And we're just going to move it. And there you go. I remember to do this, you must have the auto key enabled. And I always like to keep things in linear unless I have something in between. I also have a sequencer tutorial on that playlist if you are new to this. So let's just see how it looks on camera. I'm gonna go here, uh, get my game view, and just click play. And as you can see, it moves with us and we don't go through it at any point. And again, this is just an effect placeholder to help out with the ambience, with that cinematic effect that you saw in the short film that I put out before this video. There may be other ways to do this with volumetrics. I just find that the easier things are, the simpler thing, not the easier, sorry. The simpler things are for sequencer, the more chance you have of it working. All right, everybody, that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoyed, the short film that I put up this week and you have some questions about it, please let me know so I can answer them. I'll probably create more videos about motion capture and 3D animation and all that in the coming future. Uh, but this was a tutorial that was highly requested from last week once I posted that picture. Uh, follow me on Twitter as usual. Subscribe if you haven't. Leave a like. That goes a long way. There's the Patreon if you want to help out the channel. Uh, go to the Discord if you have any questions. Sometimes I'm there. If not, Kirk or any of the other members will help you out. And um, I'll see you in the next video.